Well, I came in 1973. And, and it's really interesting because my time at Erie also started with a phone call from Niall Brady. Yeah. And, and Niall Brady said to me, uh, my economist Randy Barker has taken a sabbatical leave. How did you get your phone number? Um, well, you know, Niall was here at Cornell himself at the time. He'd I just see. been hired to replace Ralph Cummings Sr. Who had That's been right. who know. had been moved? I know to Ickerset. To Ickerset, Ralph Cummings Sr. Yeah. had been appointed Director General of Erie after Chandler. I remember that. Okay, <laughs> uh, but you know it didn't last long. Only six months, That's and right. then the Ickerset people, whoever was on the board there, said, "Oh no, we need you more over here." So they basically, this is the Ford and Rockefeller members of the yeah. board, because yeah. they were on the Erie board, yeah. and they were on the Ickerset board. So basically they said, okay, Cummings, we need you over in India at Ikrasat. Yeah, Ralph was a, he was a great institution builder. He was the guy that could build the institute, the bricks and the mortar and right. stuff. He was a terrible manager. Was he? Oh, I didn't think so. You know, I mean, he always wanted to know where I was. Bob Chandler, one time, somebody came in and asked where I was. Bob said, I don't know. He said, at the end of the year, uh, I, you know, I, uh, if he doesn't perform, I get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but, you but know, Ralph had to know, know the process where, where I was going on this trip and, and, wh yeah. and why, why I was stopping for two days in San Francisco. I didn't want to tell him that I was going down to Stanford to give a seminar. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that. But anyway, Nile was a little bit like that too. <laughs> yeah. So Nile Brady called me up and uh, he said, "You want to come out to Erie while Randy Barker's on sabbatical?" Yeah. I said, well, "Okay." It had turned it. it turned out that we had stopped at Erie. Uh, we'd been in India in 1963, and again in I India yeah. in 1967. On the way back from one of those trips, we'd stopped in the Philippines and seen Erie. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we thought, well, that's where the action is. Yeah. And just about uh, in the 70s, you know, the talk about the Green Revolution, and you know, yeah. IRA had come yeah. on the scene yeah. and burst on the scene. In fact, in 1967, uh, Ralph Cummings Jr. and I yeah. made a trip to the Punjab. Yeah. Now that wasn't rice, but that was wheat. Yeah. That was a semi-dwarf wheat. Uh, and that 67 uh, winter was a bumper crop uh, yeah. from this uh, wheat that, yeah. that they brought in from Mexico. Yeah. Uh, they had piles of wheat in the, in the schoolyards. They just yeah. didn't have enough warehouses to, to, yeah. to store it all. So yeah. that made a big impression. The Green Revolution was the talk of the town. Um, so when Niall asked me, you know, you want to come to Erie for a year, I thought, well, this is great. I want to go out there. Yeah. And my specific objective was to try to understand why small farmers weren't using this new semi-dwarf rice. Yeah. Because you, that's what all the journal articles were talking about. Yeah. Uh, they, yes, oh, sure, they have, they have this miracle rice, but yeah. small farmers aren't using it. So uh, I went out there. Uh, you were gone, and in fact, Tom Wickham was the acting head of the economics department, right, yeah. which I think caused some consternation. How could this, econ uh, this water management guy, this engineer, yeah. be head of economics? But anyway, yeah. we worked it out. Tom left me alone because I was only going to be there a year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, took advantage of the loop survey and went to central Luzon with uh, Abhi Mandak and Thelma Paris and some of those people, uh, Violi Cordova. Yeah. and uh, went out there to see why aren't these small farmers using this miracle rice. Well, it turned out they were. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> you know, I mean, So then, <laughs> then, you know, it turned out they were. Yeah. Well, why does everybody have it wrong? Yeah. So that became a theme of uh, inquiry, you know. Um, and it turned out there were a lot of farmers who were using it, but then there were other farmers who weren't, and in, 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 in places and times of the year, practically nobody was using it. So, you know, that became the puzzle that we, that we well, set out to well, untangle. Okay. So, you know, I, I came back after leave, and, and I couldn't get you out of my office. Well, I know, but, you know, but, but look, we moved out of your house, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> but, but the point is, I went to see Niall, and I said, Niall, uh, Bob's in my office, and he said, Niall said, well, we've got a rather tight, you know, space. So he gave me a, a, a desk, and, and my people behind the piano 
uh, in the lounge. Oh. And, and it's, it's where, for those of you that are familiar with Erie today, it's where the coffee shop now is. Yeah. And, and you know, we're back there, and every now and then I had to say, tell the people playing the piano, hey, stop playing the piano or try to think and stuff like that. Okay. We did that for a bit. Okay. And but you know, Randy, I mean, that was nice. It was kind of like this room. You know, a lounge and yeah. easy chairs. Yeah. You take it easy. Well, you know, later they moved, of course, Brady Hall opened up. Yeah. And, and you know, then they moved us over uh, in, into Brady Hall next to the plant breeders. That, right. That's as close to the Almighty as you can get. That's right. Here, that's right. right. But they put us up on the second floor where we were kind of out of the way. Yeah. Well, that's all right. The breeders are up that, there. Too. That, that space was originally going to just be. The, the deck over the over the gene bank. Oh uh, yeah. And then Hugh Murphy got the architects to redesign and make offices for the economists.